Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy, and I'm Jonathan. This is another tutorial on creating a chess engine, but we will be focusing with the general ideas of uh, more uh, graphics implementation. Um, so this applies to uh, not only chess engines, but pretty much any game or program that you would uh, wish to create in Java. And um, what we will be doing this time is uh, implementing mouse clicks. Uh, before we do that, though, there's one other thing I wanted to touch up with our graphics, and that is if we write in, um, I don't write in G dot, write in this dot, set to background color, and set it to red. When we run it now, you'll notice the background is still the same as it used to be. It is not red. And why is that? This does set the background color to red, but we need one other thing to make it actually turn to red, and that would be something uh, that would be written as super dot paint component, not the plural one, I uh, just put the singular one, uh, super dot paint component G. We put that first, now we run it, and you'll notice it's red. Now, that's a little bright red, so I'm going to try changing it to yellow, uh, see if that's a little easier on the eyes. There we go, now these shapes are clearly defined out there. Okay, so there's a little bit of info on the color, and I'll explain more about this super.paint component G uh, a little bit later. Now what we're going to do is add a mouse, uh, uh, a listener. A listener, uh, it keeps track of mouse motion and, uh, and mouse clicks and such, whereas right now this program is, uh, ignores that. It doesn't uh, receive signals when mouses are clicked and stuff. So what we're going to type in is uh, we're going to import a new library and this time it'll be java dot uh, awt dot events uh, dot star semicolon. Now it'll underline yellow because it's not being used and we need a, uh, not only do we need to import in this case we need to say that this class recognizes it by saying uh, this J panel uh, implements, we would say, it implements mouse listener and that would be uh, things like a, a click or a mouse release and then um, it also implements mouse motion listener and that would be things like uh, moving your mouse and dragging, not just a click. So the click and drag, the click is taken in the mouse listener and the drag part is taken in the, the mouse motion listener. That's kind of how they're uh, divided. And then in our graphics thing, we need to add a couple more this things. So we'll say this dot add mouse listener and leave in the brackets of this and this dot add mouse motion listener. Now, now we're all set to create um, uh, um, things that uh, the mouse works with. Now you'll notice the class is complaining here, and that's because when you implement all these things, you actually need to create procedures. Remember, procedures were used, and we would call procedures. We would say loop, and then the loop procedure would be run. Well, with uh, these listeners, what they do is they listen, in a sense, to, let's say, the left click. Once a click is made with the left button, it calls, it then executes the procedure, the mouse clicked procedure. So instead of reading it in the code um, and then running a procedure, it waits for a user to physically click a button and then uh, the procedure will be run whenever that is. All right, so we have to create these procedures and we actually have to create all the procedures. We can't just have a clicked uh, procedure without a released procedure, a mouse released procedure. And the reason that for that is this mouse listener will call those procedures. And if it can't find that procedure, it's going to come up with errors. So even if you don't use a certain procedure, just leave it as a one-liner blank, but, don't, but you do need to have each one of these. So we'll write in our first one. I'll show you how this works. It'd be a public void mouse moved and in brackets we would have let me think uh, 
It'd be a uh, mouse event. Oh, sorry, mouse event. Uh, there we go. Mouse event space E, and E stands for the event. So just like this G uh, stood uh, for this graphics, uh, E stands for the event in this thing. And now, uh, so this is the mouse moved, and it's always past tense. If you say to mouse move, uh, that's not correct. It's mouse moved. Now we're going to copy, I would recommend copying this line, pasting it, and deleting the moved part, and then copying that yet again, Oops. and pasting it multiple times. We will be using this, let's see, uh, probably seven times. So that's four, five, six, seven. I believe you'll need seven of these different uh, procedures that both of these could call. So moved would be one, and you could change the order. Uh, pressed would be another one. Um, another one would be released. Whoops, I should write that before. Released. Another one would be uh, clicked. Another one dragged uh, and entered, that's how you spell it, and exited. Uh, like that. Now you'll notice no errors. You'll notice the color is actually orange, which means not everything is quite right. It's more of a warning. Uh, orange is a warning showing you there. Now, if we change this to exit, you'll notice now you have an error. It turns to red. And that's because these have to be typed out exactly. Or if you change this E to a lowercase e, no. These listeners call exactly these names, and so you need to have them available. Now, you'll notice also on the side, there are all these warnings, and that's obviously what the, the orange is staying for there. And do fix all these warnings, which is basically just adding a at override, to each one, uh, like so, and um, uh, that's very, uh, it's not super important, but it can cause uh, problems if you don't have them, or if you have them where they shouldn't be. Anyways, just for now, uh, listen to the IDE, uh, do what it says, and uh, it uh, generally is correct. At least I haven't found a case where it asks for the wrong uh, uh, thing at the wrong place. So um, now we've created these events. So this mouse listener, once it recognizes a click, for instance, um, it's going to call this thing. And it'll send its information through the symbol E. So let's uh, put in some details here. Um, first, before we do that, let's create, um, as a way of telling, within our class, we will create, uh, before they override, I guess, we'll create an uh, static int x comma y. So we're creating two integers uh, variables, x and y, and we're making them global variables. They apply to everything in this whole page, this whole class. So, um, and then we will, uh, we want to change these values of x and y. Now what we will do in our uh, mouse clicked event is we are going to take, say, uh, x equals e dot get x and y equals e dot get y and now we will create let's say this box this first uh, box which is blue we set the color to blue and we draw this box but this time let's change it to uh, x minus 20 and y minus 20 and we'll make it 40 wide and 40 tall. Um, so, and now we will also, because x is undefined at the beginning before a click is made, so we need to say that x and y are start out as zero. Now, let's look at what happens when we run this thing. You will notice now that this square, uh, the center of that square actually is how we had written it, is right there in the corner. But when I click, try clicking right, left. Uh, this click thing is uh, doesn't matter if it's right or left. Um, just so you know, it 
takes them all the same. Clicking around, I'm clicking. If you, uh, you might not know that, but I'm trying different spots. And the box isn't moving. But actually it is. Java is very precise. It has said, yes, change X and Y, but it hasn't told, uh, been told to redraw this frame. This window that we have, it hasn't been told, uh, redraw. So what we're going to say is uh, it's actually a repaint would be uh, what you would write. Now when we run it, hopefully this works, you click somewhere, you'll notice it's on the release click. Not on the press, but the click. It seems to move. Now, uh, clicked is also different. If I, I'm pressing down, you can't see my key. Okay, um, so if I go to a new spot, I pr press and hold my key down. If I release, it goes there. That's a click. However, if I press somewhere, as I'm pressing right now, you can't see it, and I move my mouse, and then I release, that is not a click. Um, and you could think of it. You know, I'm clicking on a button, but then I release, uh, for instance, uh, let me see. Okay, if I click on this run button, but then I move my mouse off and release, it doesn't run it. I have to stay on that button. Even if I move onto a different spot on that button, it doesn't work. A click requires staying in the same position. That's how clicks work. And um, so that's exactly what this click thing does. Now if I cut this, uh, just control X, cut that from the clicked, and check out what the released does. Okay, now if we run it in the released, you're going to see wherever you release the button. You can click and release, it appears, or you can move around while clicking and release, and it appears there. Now, undo that, change it to the pressed. Pressed is obviously the uh, pair to released. So now wherever you press, the moment it's pressed, it appears there. So while your mouse is still pressed down, uh, it has appeared, whereas the clicked required the mouse to have lifted. Uh, press and left in the same spot. Now mouse moved, when you run this, you're going to get a live feedback. Here the mouse is being moved. So wherever I go, the mouse goes. And when I go out of the screen, obviously, it doesn't try to follow me. It only reads what's inside the screen. All right, because it's the get X, and, or the get Y, it's just reading what's inside. I believe there was another one, get Y on the screen. Um, if we changed it to that, let's see. Now, uh, it will follow, uh, it, it gives me a different, actually, location, because it's, um, uh, the screen one uh, actually works a little different. You can see, um, what, the lower I lower this window, to lower that box is from me. And if I raise it up here, it's close. And that's because it's relative to the screen, but then it's drawing relative to the window. So it says, my mouse is way down on the screen, but, a court, but when it draws on the window, it draws it way down from the top of the window. Um, so that's why you get that space there. But there's different things you can type. Now, if we uh, pick uh, dragged, um, yeah, let's pick dragged. Um, dragged, you'll notice if you click somewhere, it doesn't move. Just a click and release. Uh, nothing happens. You have to click and move. And the moment you move, while your mouse is still down, it starts moving with you. So it's only called once you start moving with your mouse down. Kind of the opposite of click. Click only happens when you don't move. But drag happens when you move and while your mouse is still down. And you let go and it quits moving. So you click, nothing happens, you start moving and it happens, and you let go. All right, that's where dragged works. Uh, mouse entered, now uh, you might wonder what that does, and it basically has to do with when does your mouse enter this window. So your mouse, boom, my mouse entered the window, and now it does nothing. If I go up, boom, the mouse entered. Boom, the mouse entered. And anywhere where my mouse entered, it suddenly recognizes, ah, the mouse is in my window, do this. And of course the mouse exited, does uh, the very opposite, says, ah, you left. But when you come in, nothing happens. And there you left. And there you left. And there you left. Now, one other thing I want to show you. Uh, if you put this back into, uh, let's have the mouse moved. We want a live feedback here. Okay, you'll notice the mouse moved, moves around, 
but the blue goes behind the purple. Now, why would it think of that depth? Why not go the other way, or how does it know? Well, the answer is that blue is drawn first, this blue square, um, right here, I guess, and then purple is drawn, and of course, purple would be drawn over top. Um, it goes from back to front and just draws over top each time. Now, um, now that's depth. Now, if I get rid of this super dot paint component, um, this is one other thing that line does besides the background. Obviously, the background is gone, but you'll notice when I move around, it doesn't uh, redraw. It kind of adds pixels. It doesn't it take away pixels. And so you'll notice you can do this, and also you'll notice so this would work more as a painting program, actually. Um, a very simplistic painting program. And you notice when I try to draw over the purple, it just draws behind, because it always draws purple after it draws the blue right there. All right, so here you can obviously see it's not, uh, it's not uh, redrawing, and so uh, it's just adding pixels. And so that's another reason why you want this super dot paint component G line there. So. Hopefully you have, um, I'll leave it as this for the end, and hopefully uh, this has been helpful uh, for whatever project you are making, getting some basic mouse movements in there so that the user can interact with your program, which is essential in nearly every program or game. So until next time, enjoy Java.